Hello everybody. So it took me a long time, again, to do an update on a V12 project. It's just a lot of research for uh, how to build it and uh, sourcing parts, so I uh, hope you guys understand it. So uh, I've got the front suspension also uh, mounted and uh, yeah, rebuild it. So what I've done is uh, I got a top mount installed. So we've got the, uh, the BC suspension, the front strut from the BMW E36 is mounted, so it's uh, it's high as possible. So we, this is the highest point, this is just a half a centimeter from the, from the hood. So that's all perfect. So and then I have some adjustments to go up and down. So I think I have to, it's almost on its lowest position you can see here. But I can get it about five centimeters down, so it depends on how much the uh, spring will uh, go in when the weight is on it. But I think I'm pretty good. I got a heavier spring on the front. So uh, what I also did, I can show you that in the other one easier, I think. There was a little bit, last time I told that there was a little bit of an angle difference in the wheel carrier. You can see in here. I welded in the angle. Angle is a little bit different, so uh, I cut uh, about two millimeters out of here and I welded it back together, and then it was a perfect fit. So you can see it's just, uh, yeah, it's a perfect fit. So just for a little bit of information, a wheel hub of uh, W201 and W124 and the R129. Are all completely the same. The only difference that, it, that there is is the mountings of the, the brake calipers. So they can be a little bit because you got bigger brakes and the uh, holes for the steering uh, for the steering uh, connections are bigger. So this is bigger. I don't know if on 24 is also bigger, but I think that's the same as on uh, the 29 of uh, W201. But the positions of all the connections are perfectly the same. So if you want to do a bigger brake setup on a, uh, uh, on a 24 or on a W201, it's the same as a 500E from the W124 that uses also wheel hubs from a SL500. So that's the easiest way to do it. And you, then you go up to, I thought, 300 millimeter, 320 millimeter brakes. So that's the same setup as I have because this is also from. You can see this is the part number. This is also on a 320 SL. So if you use the uh, normal versions of an uh, R29, 320 and a 500, they have uh, bigger brakes and they fit perfectly in the need and uh, underneath the W201. The only thing you need to change is this arm, but it's not that easy to get it and get it off because the bolts are almost always rotted in. So I'm not going to lose this one up because uh, I was to break, I think, but uh, I just used this one. So the, another thing what I've done, I've uh, got the engine back in, of course, and um, because I needed to measure the the axle, and uh, it's, I, I brought the thing away. Uh, this evening I need to pick it up because it's shortened by a, a guy that really needs how to do that. So it's shortened and. Uh, balanced so I needed to cut out the normal I've got some measurements here it's all in centimeters I don't know if you can see that but my uh, length of the axle needed to be 137.8 centimeters so the original axle length is on 84.2 so it needed to remove 46.4 centimeters of 464 millimeters so that's uh, out of it so the the Axle from the diff to the wheel hub also needed to be shortened. I I got it dismantled <coughs> in a really big axles. But what is it with the parts of this uh, Mercedes axles? You cannot get um, normally you cannot uh, open the CV joints. So what it is it with this? It's really greasy. So uh, this is a steel cap that's normally on top of here. So normally when you have an axle in it, on top of here, and you want to get it out, 
normally there's just a clip underneath and you can just hit it and then it will go out. In uh, with this Mercedes axle it's not, it's just uh, this clip you only can remove with a snap ring. This is like a snap ring, it's like it's not a snap ring and you have to just uh, remove it with a uh, remove it. So what's the only way to remove it is to get this cap off, but it is it's uh, hit in in here, so you cannot get it out again without damaging it. So I uh, got a grinder and grinded the, the the side of it of it off, and hope to get a spare part for it, but it's not available. So I think I when I put it back in, I just need to put some spot welds on it, and then seal it. I think that is good enough because there's also a seal in here, no ring. But you need to get it off because otherwise you cannot get in an angle to get all the uh, I say that the uh, uh, the balls out of it. Otherwise you cannot get the sensor out of it and loosen it. So the other side you can just uh, get on the other side. That's no problem. So I got the axle out of it. It also needs to be shortened. It's normally it's all the same length. The axles are not that much different in length from uh, from all those cars. But the, the problem is the differential is. 10 centimeters wider than the normal differential. So this axle needs to be shortened by uh, 5.8 centimeters in a bit. It's uh, 58 and a half millimeters. So that needs to be shortened. The same guy that also shortened my uh, axle uh, from the transmission to the diff is also going to do uh, these axles. I will bring them to him. and. Uh, it's a very professional guy, so I really like that. It's going to be very, very good. So I hope he's also going to do two double chest ones. So I got also the differential mounted. So I will show you that how big it is because I thought the last time it was not in there. Oh yeah, at first um, I cut all also uh, the plate welded in to make it stronger. I welded the beam towards the chassis beam in here, otherwise because this uh, this top mount is not made to have uh, normally a coil over it, so you need to make it stronger, so it's completely welded in here. The, the top mount outside, also in here, you can see, here, I hope you can see with the light, I will lower it and see, show you that later then. So maybe I'm going to weld in another piece in here, on the side, because I cannot get at the uh, put a strut bar over the engine because there is not enough space. But I'll show you that when it's down again. I will also welded in another piece in here because I just want to have more strength in the subframe. I don't, I don't think it's really needed, but I just want to make sure. That, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit of material. But I was a little bit too much, uh, too fast welded it in because now my uh, steering box. So that's one millimeter less to fit, so I have to get a little bit out of here to get it back in. It's a little bit, uh, yeah. Found, uh, I just found it out. So the big, the, the differential in the back. So if you can see here, I have a oh, it's light in here. Wait a minute, I put the light on. So the differential. So as you can see, pretty big. It's a lot bigger than normally is in a car like this because it, it's just it fits just like it should. There's not much space left. And you can see it on the top, but I can just put my finger on top of a disc. It just fits. The axles are perfectly uh, mounted, so they are uh, not hitting anything. On top, there's also about a finger. So about a centimeter space left on top, and for the rest it just fits perfectly. It's completely like uh, the original is normally placed. So it's uh, just a little bit upwards, the axle is normally just a little bit upwards, and then it's going uh, horizontally to the gearbox. So that's all done. I also got the, uh, the this one I got now welded in and mounted. I test fitted everything with the wheels on it. It's all perfect. The only thing I need to do is uh, roll out my fenders a little bit. It's just to get no rub with the wheels. It's I think it's all 
a half a centimeter. I think I can get it with a with a normal roller. I ordered one. Also on the front, I got the same uh, thing I needed to do with it. So, uh, and I'm uh, also got in the f in the front. I got now a new bumper. All over the car, and I'll show you that, uh, all those parts. So first at the front, I also welded in these beams. They are going to the top mounts to the chassis, to the frame of the chassis. So I wanted to have uh, at least three pieces to get the mounts as stiff as possible, but I think this is already pretty strong. But I also wanted to have a strut bar over the top. But because I have also the chassis number here, I don't want to have uh, too much material out of it towards the chassis number. And there is not enough space upwards to the hood to get a nice thick, thick beam or something over it. So I have to think about it if I can do it. Because otherwise, if I want to mount it more in the back side, it will go over the top where normally the engine harness is going out. So it's engine harness is in here. So it's completely in the same line. So I don't want to have that in its way. So and if I go too much uh, to the front, the angle of the hood is going down, and then there's no space. So, but I think I'm going to weld just underneath in, in the subframe some beams of just one beam, and then it will be. I think it will be strong enough. So it's not a, a track car or anything else. So I think it will be uh, pretty strong. So also on the other side, it's all done and welded in. There's more space in here, of course, because you don't have the the side plate with the chassis number. So that's all done. So uh, I got also bumpers. So what have I bought? So normally I just want to leave it like the original uh, paneling like this. I thought about that a long time and I'm going to change like it's now, the plans like it's now, it's going to change to a facelift model because I think it gives the car a uh, uh, how you say that? A more yeah, wider look, I think. And um, yeah, it's more original than I just have this old model with no paneling on the side and a modern bumper on the front. And I fitted this bumper, and it fits almost perfect. It needs to be ha it needs to be mounted a lip underneath to get it all fitted. The color, I don't know, it will not stay this color because I got also a rear bumper with no uh, uh, towing hook a hole in it, so that's also pretty good, but that one is gray. Oh, this is a gray bumper, it's all original. The only thing that I could not find is a bumper with ventilation holes in it. So I have to modify this bumper with ventilation uh, holes in it for my radiator. But I, I, I tried to search one, but I cannot find it. It's just uh, those bumpers are only mounted on the last uh, few years on cars that had air conditioning or turbo diesels with a transmission cooler. And uh, they just ask, or they just ask a real high amount of money. I think it's just not normal. And I also thought about an AMG body kit, but I don't really like the rear, the front bumper. It's just, yeah. Yeah, and then I, I just want to have it pretty much uh, like original Mercedes parts. And I know MG is, is uh, yeah, almost original Mercedes. Uh, it, it's, yeah, but I don't really like that, that style on this car. So I'm going for the original body kit to give it the more nice and clean look. And uh, the color I don't know yet. Yeah, I've, I have a lot of thoughts. Also white was in my head that I just have a white body and uh, light gray paneling underneath. I think that's also pretty clean of really light gray with a darker paneling. So if somebody has some suggestions about the color, put a link in the comment section uh, just uh, to give me some ideas if you have a nice, uh, nice idea about it, it's really appreciated. So, I hope you like this, uh, this update. There is, uh, work is still being done. I, I know it's uh, take me sometimes uh, a lot of time to uh, 
get something done, but uh, it's just another lot of research still. But I'm getting there. So the next plans to do is uh, get the axles done and uh, get them all uh, lined up and that everything is fitting. Then uh, I have to modify, of course, that the steering box is getting back in. If I know what the ride height is, I can uh, get the, <coughs> the steering uh, box fitted and connected to the to the wheel hubs, so that it all is in line. And uh, then transmission cooler needs to be mounted. I need to mount the oil cooler. And uh, the bearing of the drive shaft from the transmission to the to the differential needs to be put back in because it's now in another place and it's much bigger. So that needs to be done. And then I just found out also uh, because I mounted the engine in and the radiator that my headlights still need some modifications. I want to leave them in one piece. But my ideas are now that I'm going to uh, get the, the, the light that's normally on the inside. I'm going to lose that light, I think. And I'm going to use that as a sort of an air intake. So I have to see how I'm going to do that. But I, because I don't have, because my radiator is going in here. So it's in the headlight, is, it's like this. So it's, there's no room for it. So I have to think about that. And then, yeah, I got some spots to weld and rust repairs to do. Yeah, so uh, that's where I am right now. So, uh, yeah, for the people who did not see my wheels yet, it's a Sagan 18 inch wheel. Uh, this is uh, wider in the back than in the front, so uh, these sets came only on a, f I thought it was only on a V12 model. And it was only on the S class and the CL, I thought. And uh, this is an 8 uh, inch wheel in the front and a 9 inch wheel in the back. So, what I'm, I think I go for 225 in the front and 255 in the rear, I think. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a very nice wheel. It's just a polished aluminium with a uh, clear coat over it. I think it, uh, it's just really pretty. So, it's 18 inch, it's pretty big for 190. And, uh, I hope they will fit pretty good, otherwise I will go for a 17 inch, but I think uh, this wheel will give the car a very nice stance, I think. So, so thanks for watching, and uh, if there are any questions or comments, uh, give a comment in below the video, put a thumbs up if you like it, share it, and uh, subscribe, so and see you next time. Bye bye.